Hi, I'm Netter, and this is Netter's Network, and today we're going to be doing part two, the prep. Whenever you're taking on a painting project, you can't just put paint on the walls and expect it to not get on literally everything, hence the prep. Prep work is always important, whether it's removing the hardware, covering over things you don't want to get painted, filling in holes or gaps to make things easier for laying floors or painting, depending on what it is you're planning on doing. The prep work is always important. That's one step you never want to miss. Along with the lovely blue tiles in my shower, I have this really old, outdated countertop, the white with the gold specks that was so popular at the time, and this really old, outdated, ugly floor. This was actually under another layer of linoleum, and this layer is just over plywood, so it's still here for now. And I am going to change all of it. Let's start with removing this faceplate. With the face plate off, I can now paint around where this will sit once it's finished and not have to worry about getting paint on this really pretty face plate. For this face plate, I'm going to try to remove it, but I don't think I'm going to be successful. It has layers of paint around it, and I don't think that's going to be easy to remove, if I can at all. But let's try it. Screw. Okay, yeah, this one is definitely is not coming off like the other one did. But let me see if maybe using a small screwdriver I can kind of pry it off. Now this is not moving. So I'm just going to replace the screws on this and I'm going to frog tape it. Like I said, there are some things you're not going to be able to remove, but you're still going to want to protect them. This is one of those things. This is frog tape, or painter's tape, and I'm going to use this to cover the outlet. It's really easy to use. You just pull up the amount that you need, tear it off, and apply it where you need it. I'm making sure that I'm very careful to go around the edges so that it's totally protected from any paint that might come along the seam that's not going to actually get onto the faceplate. Use as much or as little as you need. until the entire item that you want protected is covered. And now this outlet is completely protected from any paint. Probably my least favorite thing to do when painting is taping off. And when you've got curves like this, it can be really hard to try and get the tape around there. So I'm actually thinking smarter, not harder, and I'm making a template. So I'm just going to take my frog tape or painter's tape. I'm putting it over where the curve is and then I can just take my nail and go around the curve
to give me a template to cut out. So now, all I have to do is fit it into place. And that just saved me a lot of time and hassle. To finish off this room with the painter's tape, I tape both ends of the towel bar, the towel hooks, and the toilet paper dispenser. That is everything that I needed to tape off in this room. I also use the painter's tape to tape the screws for the space plate to the back so I don't lose them. When I fab on the shower area, that bar will have to come down. It's one of those pressure bars, so it's going to be really easy for me to remove. This small area here next to the tub, I'm not going to worry about taping that off. I'm going to be painting that white, like the walls, and I'm going to go all the way up with that, and then the rest of that's all going to be fab on. So hopefully it'll blend together seamlessly. I'm going to be doing the same over here with the tile behind the toilet. All that is going to be painted white. For my window, I'm going to give that a fresh coat of white paint. Not changing the color in there, just giving it an updated fresh look with a new coat. One of the issues my bathroom has is one of the previous owners tried to do it yourself something here and just made a mess of this back area. I think there was a leak at one time and they tried to um, fix the floor after something happened and it's just a mess. As a result, it's not smooth. So I'm going to have to smooth this out before I can even think about putting down my flooring. The other area I'm going to have to prep, basically sand it down, is this area here. It's on the countertop that's next to the toilet and just from years of things getting splashed on it, and I'll leave that to your imagination, it's um, caused the paint to kind of crack and peel and it's really ugly. So when I paint this, I'm also going to put over a um, coat of polyurethane sealer to make sure that I can wipe it off easily when I need to. Of course, since I plan to paint inside my cabinet and inside the drawers, I've got to make sure that I remove everything underneath first because I'm going to be painting the sides and the backs and even the um, bottom of the inside of these cabinets. Yeah, don't judge. I know it's a mess. i got to clear all that out. I'll be doing the same thing with my drawer over there that I use for my makeup. Taking everything out and painting all the inside. The first thing I did was to remove the hardware from the drawer front and the cabinet front. All of these were covered with a thick layer of white paint that had to come off. I used a This Old House method of boiling them in hot water and baking soda and letting them sit for 15 minutes. After I removed them from the hot water, it pretty much peeled right off. These are the knobs that go onto the cabinet doors. And I got most of the paint off, but then I decided I really like this kind of antique look that it's got to it, with the silver peeking through. And still has a little bit of the white, but I just like the way that looks. It, it gives a really unique look. And what's nice about this is that it appears to be porcelain. It's got a really nice heavy weight to it. And I really think it's kind of pretty. Next we have the door front handles. So these are the ones that were here. And on the one single drawer. Now because my colors for the bathroom are going to be black, white, gray, and deep blue, the gold is not going to work with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to actually paint these again, but I'm going to paint these with a silver tone to make them um, match the rest of the decor. 
And what I like about these is, I don't know how well you can see that, but the nice detail that's here on the ends, this is actually a cheaper metal than the, the two knobs that I have there. But it's like, you know, it's original to the house, so I want to try and keep these and use them rather than buy something new. This little tag here is just kind of a, a one-off. This was actually located right here under the, the sink lip. And I know no one's going to notice it, but I thought it was kind of a le uh, neat little um, detail for the originality of the sink. For my cabinet doors and my two drawer fronts, I'm going to give it a pop of color with this gorgeous blue. The color is Moonshade and it's color number 4006-4C. And as you can see against the cabinets here, just how beautiful that color is. I can't wait to see it all on there. The walls ceiling, and that little bit over the shower are all going to be your basic white. So that's not going to change. It's just going to be a fresh coat of paint. The trim around the door is going to be painted the deep blue, as well as that trim along the bottom here. To replace my really old, ugly countertop, I'm going with Babylon. Now this is a marble look. So all my countertops in here will look like marble. And Fablon is a really nice, I guess you can call it kind of a contact paper. It's a peel and stick. So what I'm going to do is just simply measure what I need and then I just peel it and stick it on. If I have a seam, which I'm sure I'm going to, in between the seams I'm going to be having um, some clear acrylic caulk so that nothing can get between the, the two pieces that join. Fablon is really popular. I mean, I noticed it's really popular in the UK. People redo their countertops with these all the time because it's very spill resistant. So you can spill on these, you can you know, have puddles of water on them. It's not going to ruin it at all. Um, it's also very popular because it's inexpensive. So you can redo your entire kitchen with the Fablon and it's not going to cost a lot at all. I'll have the price for this as well as where I got it in the description below. I got enough of this to do not only my countertop in the bathroom, but my countertop in my kitchen, as well as, this is going to be quirky, here in my shower. Now the reason I want to do this in my shower is I saw another uh, person who had done this and it looked fabulous when they were done. It looked like they had expensive marble in their shower and all it was was Fablon. And he made sure that he caulked in between the seams and then he put a sealant over the whole thing just to protect, protect it more. So that's what my little quirky thing is for the shower. And to replace my old outdated ugly floor, I'm going to be using this industrial rivet look. I know it seems kind of quirky, but my bathroom is so old and boring that I needed to give it a pop of something different and unusual. So this is what my floor is going to be like. And believe it or not, this is Fablon as well. And peel and stick. It's a really thick material. It's kind of like um, a thick vinyl. And this particular one is made specifically for floors. Because you're going to be walking on them a lot, um, you want to make sure that you have something that's going to be durable. And these are fantastic. You can feel the thickness in this. You could feel um, how durable it is. And this material is actually by Floor Adorn. And I'll have that information in the description below. And you can see it looks like rivets are popping out. Or not rivets, but um, the, this metal is popping out. But it's not. It's all very smooth. But the look of it is phenomenal. I love this. As I mentioned before, I'm going to have to sand this area down. All of this is kind of peeling um, paint. It's really horrible. I'm using a very um, harsh sandpaper on here just to try and get this off.
I didn't show all the sandpapering because I realized how loud it was on camera. So I finished sanding this down into really smooth now. And you can see it doesn't look pretty, but when I'm done with it, it will be. I'm also going to be removing this strip here because this is really old. It's coming off. It's disgusting. And I'm going to be replacing this with new. One of the reasons I'm wearing gloves is because you. And now I can clean up that edge really well. And there it is, all cleaned up. I wanted to film this part, but unfortunately my tripod didn't fit in here, and I couldn't hold my camera and do this at the same time. So you got to see the before, and here is the after. And like I said, what I'm done, this is going to be so pretty. Okay, I'm trying to film this one spot, but it's kind of tight in here, so I'm doing the best I can. This is a spot where the floor is really janky. I mean, you can see this part of the tile is coming up, and it's just really a mess. So I've got to pull all this up before I can do anything else. Looks like a mirror had broken here at one point because here's a sliver of one. You always have to be careful when you're renovating um, anywhere because you might end up with things like this that you don't want to get cut on. Yuck. Yeah, I might have to get a utility knife to cut this bit off because it's just not coming off. But you can see how disgusting the wood is under here. And it smells so bad. Okay, I'm going to pause while I get a utility nut because I can't move this. Be right back. Okay, I've got a utility knife. I'm going to see if I can cut this stuff away. That's good. Okay, and that piece wants to be stubborn. Oh, there we go. I mean, you can see the wood underneath. This is the original wood that's underneath this flooring. And back here is absolutely disgusting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this edge here. I was able to tear it from the other side to get that one piece off, but now this edge is totally janky. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm just going to smooth it out with the, um, with my spackling. Let's like, there you go. Um, so I'm gonna just smooth it out with this. I'll probably end up using this whole container and have to get more. That was so disgusting. And now I'm going to have to clean this area really well because I smell things that no one should ever be smelling at this point. So I'll be back after I clean this up. So my battery died. And because I needed to recharge it, I took off my gloves so that I could accomplish that. And you can see just how utterly disgusting they are. All of that is from the uh, biohazard that was behind the toilet. 
I didn't want to waste time while I was waiting for my phone to charge, so I started spackling this area here behind the toilet to smooth it out and make the edges even. It looks a lot better. I'll probably have to do a light sanding on this after it cures. I also filled in a couple of small holes here by the medicine chest. So that is all the prep work that I needed to do. Before I get too far into the reno, I want to show you again the before. So here's the blue tiled shower area, the ugly floor, and even uglier under there, and then the gold speckled countertops. All of this is going to be revamped and renewed to look fabulous, along with a fresh coat of paint on my cabinet doors and drawers. I hope you're all as excited as I am to see all of this come together. Stay tuned for our next episode, Painting. See you then. Bye.